Welcome, welcome. It's Ellen Bathgate here from Rent Roll Starter, and I'm super excited for episode four of Ellen Reads Her Blog. Actually, I've been really looking forward to this particular blog because it's an article that I originally wrote for Elite Agent. So if you got a copy of that um, episode, not episode, issue of the magazine, it was towards the end of last year, but then I published it on a version of it on my website as well. And so I wanted to go through it with you because I know that technology is an amazing tool that we can be using for impressing our clients, our current clients, and also our, also our prospective clients as well. So this particular article is all about wowing your clients with technology. So I am going to share my screen with you and we're going to dive straight into this blog article. Uh, I am going to share a bunch of tools and resources with you along the way as well and what I'll do is I'll make sure that I link those tools and resources uh, in the comments below this video or on the podcast notes if you're listening to this on podcast later on. All right so let's jump in. Technology is moving us forward as an industry and it's pretty exciting times but the truth is it's easy to lose the personal touch when you add so much automation actually I want to go full screen just for a moment because this is something that I know that we all get concerned about sometimes when we add a huge amount of automation into our business and we are um, we're having all of these automated messages go out, our clients and potential clients can get used to it and it feels automatic. So we want to still use automation, we want to still use technology, but we don't want it to feel like it's automated. All right, let's keep reading. So how can you use technology to connect with your clients better? Here are three ways you can harness technology to wow your clients and grow your rent roll at the same time, because let's face it, we want to do both, don't we? All right, first strategy is Instagram direct messages. According to Sprout Social, Instagram has now got a billion, count them, one billion with a B, monthly active users. One billion. Goodness me, that's a lot of people. Chances are your landlords, your tenants, potential landlords, potential tenants are on Instagram. There's a good chance, which means if you're not already, you should be too. So Instagram has a feature that Facebook doesn't, and it's one that you should be using this year. Instagram direct messages. So if you are not using direct messages yet, let's talk about how you can be using them. So currently, Instagram allows you to direct message pretty much anyone. This means that when you get a new follower on your Instagram account, you can send them a direct message to say hi. You can't do that with Facebook. So get DMing on Instagram. DMs are a powerful way to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the people who are in your community. So these are the people who are following you. So reach out to them. Start those conversations. Ask questions. Stay in touch with your followers. And don't forget the value of an audio DM. So when you're in the DM inbox on Instagram, you can, you'll see a little microphone icon if you press and hold that, you can record an audio message. But remember, once you let go of that little microphone button, the message is sent. There is no second chance. I'm going to pause just for a moment there because if this is something that you are considering doing, I would suggest that if you do not have experience sending audio messages, start by practicing. And if you want, you can send an audio message to me on Instagram. So we're just at Rent Roll Starter. And if you want to have someone that you can practice on, you can send one through to me. I would love to receive your Instagram audio direct message. Um, all right, let's keep reading. Uh, I predict that eventually you won't be able to direct message with your followers, just like Facebook. But until then, DM away. Let's talk a little bit more about the value of DMs on Instagram. DMs give you a way of having one-on-one -on -one personalized communication with your followers and also with people who are not your followers as well because you have the ability to do that on Instagram. 
We don't have that on Facebook. So just while we've got it, I don't think we'll always be able to do it, but while we've got it, why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you take advantage of this feature? So it means when you get a new follower, send them a DM. When somebody interacts with your page, send them a DM. Because what we want to do is we want to get people who are our followers and turn them into either clients, active prospective clients, or potential referral partners, right? We want to actually have some relationship with these people who are following us. Otherwise, if all we do is just have them follow us on Instagram and they never join our database or they never actually have a conversation with us, then it's just it's like a vanity metric, isn't it? It's just a whole bunch of people who follow you. But if it's not turning your database into a larger database, if it's not converting people into being paying clients in your rent roll, then they're just numbers for the sake of numbers. Like you probably have an Instagram account so that you can grow your business. So you want to be having conversations with the people who are your followers. So take advantage of this while it's available. Let's keep reading the blog. This is the second strategy, personal video messages. I love personal video messages. Video, especially personalized video, is one of the most powerful ways to connect with your clients and potential clients. It's the next best thing to being in front of them. And let's be honest, if you possibly can, you're going to want to get people on the phone. You're going to want to meet people face to face. But if you can't do that, then a video is likely the next best thing. Let's keep reading. These are my three favorite times to send video messages to your existing landlord clients. So these are people who are already your landlord clients. We're looking at ways we can wow them. So the first way is when you're finishing a routine inspection and you're locking up the house. So take 60 seconds to pull out your smartphone, send a quick video, tell your landlord that you finished the inspection, give a quick update on how the tenant is looking after the property. This is also an ideal time to let the landlord know when they can expect to see the inspection report, whether it's same day or whether there's a little bit of lag time. And this type of video is one that your landlords will possibly show to their friends, their landlord friends, right? So take a moment to impress your landlords with these videos. Um, the second time is when you're locking up after an open home. Landlords are at their most stressed when their investment property is sitting vacant or about to become vacant. Like that's the most stressful time for a landlord, probably with the exception of, you know, when a tenant's causing serious issues, really big arrears or really big damage. Aside from that, it's vacancy. That's when they're most stressed. So take a moment to record a quick video as you're locking up after an open home. You can update the landlord on how the home, open home went. And sure, you're probably going to send them a, a report after the open home too, especially if you're using open home software. But having this as well, like adding a video to this process offers the landlord extra reassurance that you're on the job and prioritizing them, especially if you film the video while you're at the property. There's nothing quite like actually locking up the house, pulling the door closed behind you as you're speaking to the camera, as you're getting ready to send this video to the landlord. Because there's a difference, isn't there, between receiving a written report to say, this is how many people came through the house, this is how many people requested applications, this is what the expected turnaround time. It's one thing to get that sort of a report and it's another thing to receive a 30 to 60 second video at the property giving that update. Um, and then the third time I love the idea of sending a video is when you get a new landlord lead. Now, in an ideal world, when you get a new landlord lead, you would pick up the phone and you would speak with them immediately. But sometimes you hit voicemail or sometimes you don't get a phone number at all. So this is the perfect opportunity to send a video message to say hi, make a connection that feels more and more personal than a voicemail message. And remember, if this is a landlord who is contacting maybe a few agents in your area, there's a good chance that you will be the only one sending them a personal video because video is still something people are uncomfortable with. So if you could be the only one 
who is willing to get on video and share something, introduce yourself, let them know when you're going to call, you might be the only agent that does that. And of course, the more practice you get with this sort of thing, the easier it's going to be for you. Let's keep reading. All right, some quick tips for sending videos like these. So if you're sending video messages via email, then use video messaging software like Bonjoro. I'll make sure I link to that uh, wherever you're watching or listening to this video. Um, Software platforms like these allow you to send a video message without appearing as a large attachment in your email because a video file is quite large. Um, look at your phone's camera, not at the screen. It's so tempting to look at the screen, which is where we see ourselves, but you want your client to feel as though you're looking them in the eye and that means you've got to look at the camera for that. And then keep it short and sweet. 60 seconds for a message like this is all you really need. And if you're not comfortable and confident on camera, that's okay. It's just a practice thing. So I'm going to suggest you download a tool like Bonjuro. If you want to send a practice one to me, you're welcome to. And get practicing with it. Start by sending a couple to family, friends, colleagues, or maybe just to your first couple of landlords that you know really well who are not going to judge you for it and just start there. All right, let's keep reading. Uh, this is the third way to wow your clients with technology. So when it comes to the soft, uh, personalize your own automation. So this is the third strategy. When it comes to software and automation, you have so much choice these days from leasing to maintenance to lease renewals to routine inspections, even new business management. There's a piece of software for everything. The cool thing is when you bring in a new piece of software, they have templated email and SMSs, usually ready, waiting for you to go. And here is where it's easy to lose the personal touch. Those templates don't sound like you. They sound like the brilliant person who wrote them. So when your office implements a new piece of software, you've got to set aside time to read the message templates and customize them to sound like you. In doing this, you'll make them more clickable. You'll make them more readable. For your clients. So here's an example. Let's just say you've got some trust accounting software that automatically reminds your tenant if their rent is late. And you probably do. Most property management trust accounting software does this for you, does it automatically. So chances are that particular piece of software has an email template for when a tenant is like one day in arrears. So you want the email to achieve two things. You want the tenant to open the email because like that's a battle in itself, isn't it? Getting a tenant, somebody to actually open your email. And then you want the tenant to either pay the rent that they owe immediately or let you know what's happening so that you, you can communicate this with your owner. Because I think we're all aware that doing arrears is not just a matter of sending the automated emails every day as you run your reports. That's not doing arrears. We actually want to get the rent paid or we want to find out what's going on if there's an issue there somewhere. So we need to get the tenant to open the email and we need the email to be relatable enough and inspiring enough that they are either inspired into action so that they pay their rent or so they reply to you and let you know what's going on. Because if something's going on, you want to know about it. Let's keep going. So the first thing to personalize is the subject line of your email. So you get this email template from your property management software. Now it's time to personalize it. So currently the subject line probably reads something like rent is one day, 23 Smith Street, pretend suburb. It's probably something like that, right? But that subject line isn't really interesting enough to get your tenants to read the email, right? So why not try a subject line like this? Something weird happened, Bob, are you okay? Now, which of those emails is Bob most likely to open? Like if, if Bob sees an email that says, rentary is one day, 23 Smith Street, or if Bob sees an email subject that says, something weird happened, Bob, are you okay? He's more likely to open the second one, right? So it's time to tackle the personalization of the 
the body of the email. Once you've created some sort of a subject line that people are likely to open, it doesn't have to be as weird as my one, but just something that attracts them enough or creates intrigue enough that they will actually open the email, then you can personalize the body of the email. So rather than being super professional or informing your tenant that they're one day in arrears and threatening your next actions, let's just remember our goal. Our goal is to either get the tenant to pay the rent or to talk to you and let you know what is going on. So how about an email like this? I'm going to read this email to you. Hi, Bob. Just checked the banking this morning and it doesn't look like your rent hit our account like it usually does. Just wanted to check in and see if you're okay. Ellen, can you see how a short, sweet, conversational email like this is more likely to get a response from your tenant, especially at day one? Like we're talking about day one of renteries, the first time you are making contact with them. Can you see how that sort of an email is more likely to get a response from your tenant? Plus, if the tenant's only one day in arrears, we really want to communicate with them effectively to increase our chances of getting them back on track. The benefit to this is that you're going to be able to keep your landlords in the loop in a way that your competitors won't be able to. So if you've got tenants ignoring your emails, you're going to have a hard time preserving that relationship with your landlord. So keep your tenants talking to you and you are more likely to keep your landlords happy. So I know that for so many years, we have been had it drilled into us that we have to go hard on rent arrears. And for the first five years in my career in property management, I was hard on rent arrears. And then when I re-entered the industry, I had a little break from the industry for a couple of years. And when I re-entered the industry and I took a slightly more conversational approach to rent arrears, goodness me, my rent arrears were lower, way lower as a result. And tenants would talk to me when things went wrong. So I actually knew what was going on. I wasn't sending out emails, sending out SMSs, making calls, hitting voicemail and not knowing what's going on. So this is where personalizing your automation is so, so important. Making your emails that go out automatically, making them sound like they actually come from you. We're going to bring it full circle here. The truth is technology can make your job so much easier. And if you use one of these three su suggestions or all three of these suggestions, you'll be able to harness technology and build strong connections with your clients and your potential clients. Now, remember, before you grow work on growing your rent roll, you need to have five extra things in place. And if you want to discover what those five things are, I've popped a little checklist together for you titled the five things to do before you grow your rent roll. And I'll have it linked wherever you are watching or listening to this video. So they're the three ways that you can use technology to wow your current clients and your prospective clients. I want to know which one are you most excited about taking action on? Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Ellen Reads Her Blog. I can't wait to see you for the next one. Bye.